The following interview was conducted with Chris Foster, the director of Discovery Park K-12 STEM program for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Monday, May 7, 2012 in Stewart Center. This is part two of an, uh, the oral history interview. The first one was conducted December 4, 2007. Good afternoon, Chris Foster. Hi, Thank Catherine. you very much. Uh, let's start with the named, you were named director of Discovery Park K-12 program that focuses on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education. Talk about the program, its focus, and in a little in-depth on that. Okay. So that, that's an, actually a very interesting program at uh, Discovery Park. You know, Discovery Park's a multidisciplinary kind of a, a research center that's always looking for grants to keep operational. So I feel like my role over the, these past five years has been to interact with the programs and the faculty to uh, give them, uh, when asked, uh, a, uh, a little bit of, of a connection to what, what's called the broader impacts. A broader impact to the National Science Foundation is how are you gonna share this knowledge that, that you've discovered? So for me, the, uh, the P14 connection there is to the schools and, and mostly to Ivy Tech. That, that's the 14 end of it. And uh, by connecting them a little bit to Discovery Park and, and really to the rest of the campus sure. as well, uh, we've, we've had a lot of success in terms of, of this so-called STEM education. Right. Now, we were made the director. Was that program in place before you came? No, actually, okay. it was it was a, a new piece, but uh, but sort of an important part of what has to be done in a grant driven kind of a sure. place. So Discovery Park has done really well with with the grants, as as everybody knows, um, and uh, one of the distinguishing features, I think, has to do with these broader impacts I was describing, the, the work with the schools. Right. So at this point, we have lots of people actually that work over at Discovery Park with programs that are grant funded that, that are doing uh, uh, work with local teachers. Right, now you're, um, you've been networking then with the campus in West Lafayette and Ivy Tech, you indicate, indicated that. Uh, what about the uh, um, Facilities are, have you had, the facilities are pretty good. Are you using the facilities that are already there? And well, you go out to the schools, to the, your outreach within the state and beyond. Well, so let me answer the, the first part about the okay. facilities. All right. The, uh, uh, the building that I'm in right now, the Hall for Discovery and Learning Research, was not completed when I arrived. It wasn't even, I don't even think it was a hole in the ground. They were still trying to figure out how to make Discovery Park work, and they, and the they meaning the probably the vice chancellor for or the vice president for research, sure. uh, those folks uh, were trying to decide how that building should go. So during my first year or two, the building went from I think a two-story to a four-story, with some uh, kinds of research that go beyond. Uh, educational stuff. Hall for Discovery and Learning Research would indicate it's it's all about the learning. But uh, we have uh, programs like NICE, the Nath National Earthquake uh, Engineering Simulation Facility, $105 million grant from the National Science Foundation there, and all these other folks that are doing work as well. So. I think it was maybe my third year that uh, we moved into this great new facility. It's beautiful. It's on the edge of campus near our new uh, entrance, the uh, the entrance off of the, the 231 bypass. Oh, very nice. That's good. Okay. And uh, so you, yeah, you were saying ahead. something about uh, connections with these other places. Sure. Uh, so one of the uh, important things about about my role, I thought right from the beginning was connecting up uh, Purdue and and Ivy Tech. A lot of the kinds of grant programs that you want to do, uh, sponsored by the federal government, like the National Science Foundation, actually require you to have a partner that is uh, a junior college. 
particularly because of the demographics of the students. Right. And coming from California, where I'd done a lot of work for a lot of years, and in partnership with the community colleges there, uh, they were strong partners. We, uh, my first, one of my first acts was to get connected with Ivy Tech and to try to develop some programs. And we did that. Good. So um, the reason this sort of pops out right here is that uh, just in this past week, we've reaffirmed one of the early programs that, that got developed through that collaboration. And that is a, a faculty research internship that uh, Ivy Tech sponsors at Discovery Park. So uh, one, of, one of my first events uh, at Ivy Tech was the, their awarding of a WIRED grant. And I suggested to their then provost that, that since it was supposed to be used to develop faculty competencies, that we actually uh, allow some of that money to go to faculty who would like to continue their research but can't because Ivy Tech is a uh, pretty much a non-research school yeah. to be able to have an opportunity to work at Discovery Park with uh, uh, our researchers. So we formed some partnerships. They took some of the money out of that Wired grant, and they were so pleased with that that it's continued up to this day. And so just in the last few weeks, I asked Al Rebar, uh, the director of Discovery Park, if that would be something that we should continue down the line now that I'm, uh, I'm not going to be around after the middle of July. Okay. And uh, Al said, oh, it's a great idea, and uh, we want to keep it going. And uh, yeah. so we're meeting here in a week or two to make sure everything is still rolling. And uh, uh, Candace Vibbert, who is our engagement director at Discovery Park, is going to oversee that mainly through Bentley Hall and Tommy Soares over there, who's the managing director of that place. One interesting thing, I'm just going on about this a little bit. Please do. Is that uh, a couple years ago, as I was looking back at the program, we had some student interns that came along with the faculty from uh, Ivy Tech. And it's an interesting story, little known, but uh, w both of these interns had a great summer at Discovery Park, learned a lot, and one of them, ended up getting a terrific internship later on, a national level internship with a really big company based on that. The other intern turned around and uh, applied to Purdue and into one of our more uh, technical majors and, and is doing just great. Wonderful. So that's sort of the way it has to be. All right, we, exactly. we, we need to make sure that all the students have a chance to uh, to continue with their education, and if they if they want to, to be able to attend a, a top place like Purdue. Exactly, and nurture them along the way, and that's what you've been doing. That's yeah. right, and the only way to do that is to have great faculty at the Ivy Techs, so that students want to take those classes. And work with them very closely, one-on-one, -on -one That's right, possible. so that's... That, that was one other outcome of that program that was interesting. Because the faculty were connected to Discovery Park, they got all the updates on what was happening on the, on, at, at the Discovery Park campus. And so they would bring their classes over to some of our seminars. Wonderful. So it was uh, a, a good. lot of good stuff. It's really come a long way. That's, that's very good. One of the things, the outcomes, and one of the things that you, I got a quote from you, we can build on that foundation to develop and research innovative ways to encourage learning in these critical areas and, cap, that cap, and captivate the minds of students in grade, grades K through 12. That's a nice quote. And this certainly what you've been speaking, speaks to that very kindly with a good examples. Hmm. You're very pleased, very good. Um, I didn't put the next stage, but we'll leave that. Uh, any committees, did you serve on a uh, university committee since you've been here? And then I'm gonna move on to the College of Education, that courtesy appointment that you had. Okay. Uh -huh. So, um, yes, I most of my work at, at Purdue committee-wise has to do with STEM education, science, okay. technology, engineering, mathematics education. Sure. And it has a lot to do with, uh, connected with the, the College of Education and with uh, uh, the uh, Office of Engagement, you know, Suresh Garamella's office, and uh, it used to be Vic Lechtenberg's office. Right. And uh, uh, with the campuses, um, 
uh, strategic plan, new synergies. So I'll just start there, okay? In, er, in the early planning for that strategic plan, we had Tiger teams. Mm -hmm. Then the Tiger team that I uh, was a member of was the one about that studied uh, how to, how to uh, get students more interested in uh, science and engineering, mathematics careers. So that was that was our report, and we we submitted that, and so it probably fit in someplace uh, into maybe launching tomorrow's leaders kind of a category or sure. something. That part of the strategic plan, um, and so some of the uh, since then, uh, what we've uh, what, what's apparent at a big place like Purdue is that we've got a lot of people doing engagement with the schools. Right. And th that educational engagement's very important. We do a good job with it, but folks aren't communicating what they're doing with each other very well. So uh, one of the projects that uh, I've been pushing since I've been here is getting those groups together a little bit more often around projects. So last spring, for instance, we had a, um, a campus summit a one-day engagement summit where everybody beyond STEM, everybody on campus who was doing engagement got a chance to come in and show what they were doing and to talk a little bit and plan out future kinds of activities. Sure. So as a spin-off of that, we decided that uh, this past spring would be, uh, there's a national conference for science teachers that, that was coming to Indianapolis, the National Science Teachers Association, and it ha actually happened at the end of March, beginning of April this spring. So after the summit, we continued to meet as a group, and I, I pretty much organized that through my office, and, and I have an administrative assistant that kept things rolling there pretty well, uh, Laura Warner. So uh, this dedicated group, based on that original uh, spring summit in March, met through the summer and the fall and planned out a beautiful exhibit. The, it was so well planned that the, uh, uh, Tim Sands, the provost, gave us some money for that. Suresh gave us some money for that. And we had the, really the only uh, uh, university uh, exhibit on the exhibit floor uh, at this big conference. The, uh, the other good outcome of that was that many people that would not usually spend the money or would not know about this kind of a meeting uh, came. So we probably had over 100 Purdue folks that over that three or four day meeting uh, came and they saw what, the, what was going on in STEM education and, and they got a chance to make some connections. And so that was good. But the only way we could do that was working together right. as a committee, and, and that's sort of been what I've been after since I got here. Right. Bringing more together, realizing that togetherness needs to be a little more work together. Linkage, Jesus, as you've done. That's very good. Um, the courtesy appointment in the College of Education, have you, did you teach any specific over in the college, or what, what did that entail? Well, I didn't actually teach any classes. Okay. But I uh, worked with individual students sure. in science education projects uh, and uh, through the Dury program, the Discovery Undergraduate Research uh, Internship Program, and uh, with uh, EPICS teams sure. over in the College of Engineering. Uh, the, the closest that I, that I really come to the College of Education on a regular basis is that I'm part of the science education faculty. And those, those folks are good folks from departments all over the campus. Uh, a lot of chemistry people, physics, biology people, and, and so it's a nice group. Uh, they also turned out in, in a big way at NSTA this time. So I was able to convince them that that would be a good thing to do, and, and so they, they came to that. The, you were talking about that. That was one of the things I was going to ask you about. Uh, I imagine that's one of your professional associations. But isn't it interesting that this year the national award was given, was won by a local person? That's right. And it was given, I, I read about that, and it was given at this conference, and it's just one, Joe Ewell. Uh, yeah, that's not exactly right. It's, uh, 
Uh, Ewell is his last name, isn't it? Rule, Rule, Rule. Isn't Joe Rule. Rule, Rule, Rule. That's right. right. That, that's right. You, yeah. got, you got me off there for a sec. Uh, yeah, Joe got his degrees here at Purdue right. in, in basically science teaching. He's right. a biology teacher over at uh, Lafayette Jeff. And uh, yeah, that was amazing. They only give one of those. And, uh, and and wasn't it he great? It was this that. year, and it was in Indianapolis, and an Indiana person, and Lafayette, wonderful. Yeah, eleven thousand teachers down there, <laughs> and, and uh, he was the Joe one. got the award. <laughs> oh, the um, student organizations. I understand you were a co-advisor for Iron Key. Do you tell the research a little bit about your involvement with that, and a little bit about the association? Yeah. So Iron Key is uh, is an over. I think it's 101 years this year, uh, old honorary, uh, senior leadership honorary at Purdue. The uh, part that most people don't know is that it's a secret society. So you only hear about the iron key folks at the end of the year in the springtime. They uh, basically do something good for the campus. And when, when that's all over with, they announce who they were that were in this group for the uh, year. So uh, I've had the pleasure of working with those folks for about five years. Before me, Patty Jiske was an advisor there. And we've just had a great time because these students are really very good. They're, they're good leaders. And when you pick out something that you should do, they organize it very well. And so for me, uh, I think the biggest part of my role with this group was to uh, listen and nod and smile and uh, well I, a and little let bit the more. ball go right that's right you you want them to really decide what they're going to do and if they do need some guidance particularly because the projects they pick out uh, require dealing with uh, agencies all over campus and they all to a person are shocked at how much the interaction they have to do with these agencies on campus to make their projects work. It's sort of like a senior um, practicum for these students in terms of working with large organizations. Right. So uh, anyway, that's, that's where uh, people like me come in. How is the what is the membership comprised of? Are they do they uh, is there a call out or no? It's secret. Research? We can't say. Oh, okay. I'm just kidding. No, it's it's uh, here's here's how it works. The uh, uh, the group is is guys and girls. It used to be all guys. Okay. Mortarboard used to be all girls, but but now it's about half and half. They're all seniors. They have. Uh, uh, a process where they select the next class. The way they do that is they're all members in large organizations already. They've all got lots of of uh, of responsibilities, and they know everybody that's coming up through the other organizations because they've worked with their respective organization. Th okay. That's right, and so they uh, get the resumes of these new folks and they hash it out. One one part of this that's interesting that not a lot of people may know about is that we have honoraries, and so these students also select about a half a dozen faculty and staff from around the campus each year as well to work with that class, and they're called honoraries. And usually, those folks turn out to be very student-centered kinds of people. So it's mm -hmm. it's just a, a real joy and pleasure to be able to spend my uh, time with them. And that's one part of this job that I'll really miss a lot. I bet. So to give you an example, because most folks don't really connect Iron Key with a lot of things on campus, there are a bunch of projects that they've, they've uh, constructed that they've left for posterity that, that is the, uh, the result of, of their big effort. So one of the first ones I was involved with is right next to uh, Stewart Hall here, just in the in the courtyard, just on the other side. It's called the Unfinished Block P. Right. The students came up with a fabulous idea that that uh, that Purdue students really need to know that their education never finishes, and so we found uh, a sculpture. We found the place working with the campus architects. We found the money. 
and I think it came out to about $150,000 that they raised during that year. And in the fall at the uh, next homecoming, we dedicated that uh, unfinished black pea. Everywhere I look now on the telephone books and posters and our website, every place I, I look, there's some folks standing in front of the black pea getting their picture taken. It's a great location, don't you? I mean, it's, I, it's I think wonderful. another thing is, is finding a spot for it, uh, but it, I think it's a good location. It's an iconic image as well. Yeah. So uh, last year, the, the group did Freedom Square, which is over by the, the armory. armory. Right. And that's a beautiful spot, and it uh, really fixed up that piece of the campus. It looks really nice. Fits in so well there, you know. It's, it's sort of the head of this new Third Street Student Achievement Quarter. quarter. And this year, we've announced that the, uh, the project is to rehabilitate uh, John Perdue. So everyone that we talked to had, had these funny ideas about who their founder was, and a lot of it was negative. So the students spent a tremendous amount of time up in the archives researching John Perdue, reading his, his writings and, uh, and finding out what he actually did. Him. Right, okay. And they found out that he was a real mentoring kind of a person. He wanted to share his entrepreneurship. He was an entrepreneur. That's right. He, I mean, this whole Purdue project is is an entrepreneurial kind of a thing, and so what they what they decided then as a result of that is that they want to have a statue of John Purdue as a sort of a middle aged person, not an old person like he shows up in a lot of the pictures that sure. we see, and sitting on a bench, uh, sort of uh, beckoning to students, basically. Uh, say, look, I'm, I'm here to give you a, uh, a bit of advice if you'd like it. And, uh, and I think that'll be nice. There'll be just a little bit more of the story about John Perdue that'll come out. And I think that uh, uh, this will be a very positive thing for the campus. Yeah. Another iconic image. Certainly, very much so. I like that idea. That's very good. <laughs> um, so to uh, move, change tax a little bit, travels on behalf, you've been doing so, and I selected some, but you can mention some others. The uh, National Chongqing University, when you went to... Um, Taiwan? Taiwan, yeah. Just make it, I'll leave it up to you, any comments you'd like to make about it. Okay. So uh, one of the pillars of the strategic plan is uh, basically getting Purdue students out there and, and for us to connect with uh, other places. Sure. And that, uh, that's that been a big effort on the part of France. And so I get to, uh, to do some of that as well. But one of the, uh, the key pieces of those visits is that we're usually in a place where there are a lot of uh, Purdue alums. So we have a big alumni event and, uh, and I help host those. Uh, for instance, in Taiwan, we, we had a, a gigantic room in Chiang Kai-shek's old palace. And everybody around the table was the minister of the government for that, or, or and they'd all gotten their degrees at Purdue. They all had very nice things to say. It's pretty amazing, all the support that you have. And we visited uh, uh, a couple universities there. We signed some mem memorandum of agreement. But the uh, the university in the southern part of that island, uh, we found out, was actually something that Purdue, back in the 50s, had helped to turn into a real uh, engineering university. And they still, every, every time they, uh, they thank anybody about their university, it's up, Purdue's always on the top of the list. So what, what I end up doing, like we just got back from East Africa, when we when we visit uh, these foreign countries, we spend probably three quarters of our time at the universities in meetings, hearing about what they're doing, and and we talk about what we're doing, and and so uh, my piece is to talk about uh, Discovery Park as a as a great example of an entrepreneurial, multidisciplinary research facility, and to talk about the uh, the science education, science and engineering education of, uh, of undergrads, and, um, and uh, science education in general. So uh, uh, that's a lot of fun, and I, I feel uh, 
good and competent, and I always enjoy that. I have a question. Uh, the one in, in uh, Taiwan, they have an a exhibition, Purdue exhibition. They room do. And uh, that must have been very interesting to see. It was. They, what, do they keep adding to it, or is it well, their earlier years? It, I think it, researchers would be interested to say, I didn't realize they had an exhibition over there. It's mostly uh, pictures from the 50s and... and uh, the early days when Purdue got really involved. Lots of pictures of Purdue folks. Uh, but uh, it, it sort of charts their history as, sure. as a university, but it, the, the big feature is Purdue. Yeah, that's they, right. they have a museum there that it, this is a part of. And I would say that... Uh, Boy, I, I, I'm bad at estimating uh, square footage there, but it, it's it's uh, an area that's probably two or three times the size of this room. Wow, that's very good size. Very big, yeah, just pretty amazing. It's like an yeah. artist studio with a you know high roof, et cetera. <laughs> so when we, I was mentioning East Africa, mm -hmm. so we went back to uh, East Africa with Gabisa Ajeta, and uh, in Arden Bement from our uh, our uh, uh, international the global policy global policy institute. Sorry about that. Yeah, uh, and uh, so in in Addis Ababa in uh, in Ethiopia, we met with their ten universities, ten top universities in the country. They all flew in or drove in or whatever. The roads aren't too good, so most of them probably flew. Uh, but the interesting thing was that these universities are wildly excited about Purdue because we do just what they want to do. And uh, 20 years ago, none of these places really existed as universities. So this country's starting up all those universities from scratch, and they all want to know what Purdue does. Then we're in Tanzania at the Nelson Mandela uh, University of Science and Technology, and they uh, did the same thing for us. They told us about what they do and what how they would love to be able to partner with Purdue. And during this time, of course, the, the big uh, issue is uh, Gabisa Jeta's agricultural uh, research. And so for that, we met with the, all of the, the ministers and our ambassadors over there. And, and uh, so uh, even though we were in East Africa, we had uh, uh, a lot of seat time there. If you, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Understand. And okay. uh, but so we're this Nelson Mandela University, and and for a long day, and the next day the president of the university took us out in one of his university cars, <clears throat> and we went from uh, uh, from his place out toward the Ngorongoro uh, crater, which is where the Maasai live, and and. Uh, that's just open country with elephants and giraffes and, and lions and, and it was just great. Full day, got up bright and early, got back late and, and took a lot of pictures. So that made that trip worthwhile. Oh, I Beautiful. Would say, right. So we do get a chance to get out every now and then. I know. Let me ask you this, how about the um, Nobel Prize? You were there. Yeah. Well, we were very fortunate. Awesome. To. Uh, <laughs> Uh, be invited by uh, by our Nobel laureate, uh, and the uh, the thing I, c I can remember from that was that it was in Stockholm at the beginning of December, cold, snowy. They don't plow their streets, so the only way that the sidewalks either. So the only way that the snow goes away is if it's beaten down and and pushed off into some other place by by feet people riding their bikes and everything is pretty amazing. But the, the other thing is that that week of the Nobel ceremonies is nonstop, morning till night, activities that are, uh, are basically, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, celebrating, that's an easy word. They, they're celebrating science all the way through. World press is there, the paparazzi, the uh, the people that are looking for autographs. I mean, it, it's pretty amazing that uh, normally you wouldn't uh, spot one of these scientists on the street, but but uh, uh, me walking out a hotel room door, uh, 
out, out of the front door of a hotel would be stopped on the street and asked if I knew anybody that was getting a Nobel Prize. Interesting. <laughs> they know a lot of big people in town then, right? <laughs> Boy, it's, it's like a, the national sport. Mm. Um, were you a faculty fellow at all while you were here? Chris, uh, in one of the residents, you, know, fac you know the faculty. Oh, no, no, I didn't okay. do that, yeah. Okay, we, okay. You know, we actually are faculty fellows, in fact. We, you know, basically. But they have, you know, uh, there have been different, different levels. Now, it used to be maybe originally years ago, but there's others at different levels that are classifications. And so, but, but for us, you know, th this is a 24-7 job. Right. So we, we get out, we have dinners with the floor of a residence hall. We uh, go to all the sports events. We uh, get invited to all of the departmental and college events. And so we're just kind of going all the time. Right. So know. for me, my schedule is I, I go into work at Discovery Park usually, and then, uh, then in the later afternoon, things start to happen. Right. And then through the evening, and then usually by about 10 o'clock, we're home and and it's time to start the other the you know get ready for the next day. So right, yeah. Uh, being the university president's a very interesting uh, role, and you really it you know like the sports teams, they're all your teams. You know, they're your students. Right. And right. so that's what that's all about. Right. Um, first gentlemen, uh, researchers have probably see that in the literature. Do you want to make a comment? They'd say, well, what what did that entail? Okay, first gentleman is uh, the title that was given to me by the trustees of Purdue, and it's a way to, uh, I guess, um, include me in, in, in legal documents about uh, travel and covering me probably insurance-wise for uh, things that I have to do as, as uh, the, basically the escort for the president. Um, I think in, at the University of California, my title was counselor to the president or something like that. So a little bit more sophisticated. Here, uh, when folks muff the first gentleman title, when I'm introduced, some have called me the first man. And I said, too biblical. Just, just close, but, but just wrong connotation. So uh, anyway. It, it's fun, and I think I actually rebelled after a while. I said, no, no more first gentleman. But then I realized that, no, it's it's not so bad. That's right, isn't it? We can go with it. Yeah, go we with can go with it. We right. can go with it, yeah. Uh, now, the children, are, um, did the children, did they, they didn't stay in the, uh, they were in school in California. Are they finished college or? Yeah, they're both out of college. Okay. Our oldest, Anne, is, uh, teaching third grade in a bilingual school in Cincinnati. She's uh, getting married this summer, the end of June, June 30th, at Westwood. How nice, very she's, nice. She's marrying a, a Boilermaker. Who, uh, Did she meet him here? That she met here. After, when she finished her master's degree, she came to live with us for a few months and, uh -huh. and she met him here. And, and so there's, a lot of boiler making in the family here. Wonderful. And your son, uh, he, he was at Stanford. Did he graduate? From so he graduated a couple years ago, uh -huh. and he's had a, a job in the banking industry uh, in the Bay Area in San Francisco since then. Okay. So this summer, he's going to start with a private equity firm. Ooh, sounds good. Okay. Yeah. He, he likes the idea of being able to uh, work with companies to make them more profitable. Right. So that's his not a scientist, but he did get a degree at Stanford in engineering, it was just with a focus in finance. Sure. That sounds like a good combination. Yeah. <laughs> He'll do okay. He, he's probably doing great. Yeah. Uh, a couple things about your hobbies. I know that you do some camping and the rock, and I uh, wanted did I ask you, the collection of your African-American art, which you had at the Art Museum. Yes. Um, I think researchers that may have read about it would just make mm -hmm. a comment on that collection. That's very nice. So France and I have always enjoyed cultural art. We like the art that's actually more utilitarian. R rather than being um, a, a tourist kind of a piece, we like something that's actually been used and that's older, that, uh, that sort of defines what the culture is all about. And so we had some of that when we came to Westwood. 
but we realized right away that uh, we don't have a, a, a museum like that on campus, so there's really no access to cultural art here. I think we're the only Big Ten school without an art museum. Okay. IU has got the spectacular okay. IMP that uh, is something that a, a young engineer that comes from a small town somewhere in Indiana deserves to be able to go and see and be taught from because uh, we want that student to have a little bit of design in their in their education. So we have so many people coming through Westwood. We've just had a good time collecting some pieces and putting them up. They all are interesting and they have uh, good stories with them. And so uh, with our Monday night leadership class, we we have uh, those freshmen coming through and uh, and and well, all sorts of events that happen. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of where the big impetus for that okay. that collection was. But I realized that when I gave that talk as part of that exhibit, gave a, a noontime talk about how a novice gets involved in collecting African art, that uh, there's just a whole lot of other levels that are very enjoyable for us. We just really enjoy uh, art and particularly ethnographic kinds of stuff that teaches you about history and people. and uh, and when we thought about it, you know, most of our friends are scientists and engineers, and that's what they like too. Good. It's pretty amazing. It's just a, a universal with uh, uh, with people. Now, the, uh, and uh, now that you've been here, uh, do you have a favorite? I asked you before, but yeah, a favorite Purdue tradition, maybe that you'd like to share with us. Ah, that's that's a good question. Um, you can have more. Sometimes people say, do I have to have one? I say, no, you can have more than one, because there are several. So let me take a look at my notes here, because okay. I, I actually, uh, uh, I jotted down a, an idea or two there. Good. And it's something uh, that we've I've already mentioned obliquely, the, uh, the president's leadership class. So I believe it, it uh, originated under, uh, Martin and Patty, but uh, but it's been around now through two uh, presidencies. So I I think it's a tradition. We'll see what Good the point. next person wants to do. Good point. All right. Um, so the reason that that I like that tradition a lot it has to do with you know just the students that you get to work with. They're very very sharp. They're motivated. They want to do the right thing. They want to be leaders. And uh, being able to uh, see those students for the full year and then to uh, uh, work with them in other organizations as they progress through their career has been a very gratifying thing for me. No, yeah, that's a good, that's very good. Uh, outstanding event at Purdue or in your life? Outstanding well, event, you got something to share with us? I do. I, okay. I think I've already shared the, the outstanding event with my daughter's marriage coming up this right. summer. Right. I think that's that's the one that I put on the top of the list. Okay. But, um, oh, here's one. So on what, one of the student groups that I work with is uh, this EPICS team I mentioned, uh, Engineering Project and Community Services. Sure. So I've worked with this group called VOSS now for about four years. And the, the idea of this engineering project was to design a, a science education tool that would uh, be an outdoor kind of, a, of a, a display at Discovery Park because we have these nice long uh, vistas there that I thought we could have something outside there. So they've, uh, this EPICS team has designed this and we have an artist now that's conceptualized it and on Friday, uh, the Voss Project, which stands for Visiting Our Solar System, is going to have its opening under a tent. They're going to actually show uh, what it's going to look like to the public. Wonderful. So it's going in right next to the police station there, right uh, where the Discovery Park uh, buildings connect with the new Health Sciences Quad. So right where that turn is will be this beautiful sculpture, it'll be landscaped, it'll be something that classes at Visit Campus can work with, our students can work with, it's gonna have so many different levels of information and, and 
project work to do with the solar system that it'll be just fabulous. Oh, that sounds really good. So I think we're coming down to the next stage. And is, or did you have your notes? Did anything I forgot to ask, or that you'd like? To, I'll leave the put it in your your good hands. How you want to either wrap it up or any comments? Anything I forgot to ask? Or well, the next I, stage? I think that you asked a lot. Uh, you know, I, I think that you know, I can make a final statement about uh, how much we enjoyed being at Purdue. That that we really, both France and I both consider it to be a real privilege to have been associated with uh, a wonderful science and engineering uh, facility, particularly because that's what we really like a lot. And uh, so for us, this will be something we'll never forget. And like you said earlier, the people that we've worked with right. will be always in our minds and so it's a it's a poignant moment uh this transition now over the next couple months to right. uh, to becoming civilians again well and we'll look for you at ross aid uh, when they do the uh, before the fourth quarter for the shout you can be up there with the flag <laughs> doing that oh that's right so i'm sure that's that great. we'll be back i know that, on, that's on occasion great. We'll, and it's we'll, interesting being in the stadium because people are always looking up trying to figure out what window where there are <laughs> and you can look on the jumbotron and it helps you a little bit <laughs> oh yeah yeah oh, anything uh, that uh, does that sort of cover uh, and your notes and everything's okay you think i think so good yeah chris uh, i want to thank you very much I and mean, we want to wish you the best both you thank and you Catherine. yeah and we'll keep in touch all okay, right thank you very much <laughs>